So here we are. Uh, this is the radio lab in Ukiah, California. I have the mock-up of the radio over IP stuff. This is what we're going to be building in the future. Uh, we want to put a console like this in every office. Uh, we want to put a base station like this in every office. They have a local base that they can talk to Cal Fire people in the local field with. And then uh, we want to have these uh, uh, mock-up base stations uh, connect to any mountaintop base stations in you as well. So this is just a, a basic mock-up of a two-channel console, the most basic console we would give each office. So uh, like I said, the eventual goal is to have this set up in every field office and even in remote locations like King Range, Four Roar, that type of stuff. And then, uh, and then they all connect to the mountaintop stuff right here, which connects to all our, our uh, radios in, in, in the field, like repeaters. Uh, so for demonstration today, I have a Codan base station that I have set up. It can talk to the local repeater around here, um, uh, which is Cow Mountain, and that's the repeater I'll be using for this. Um, but this basically is the exact mock-up of a mountaintop base station, only it's here on the valley floor in Ukiah. Uh, it also has a controller here. This controller allows uh, me to point the connection out to multiple locations uh, uh, or multiple consoles out at, at remote locations. Um, I can literally point to hundreds of, uh, point this radio to hundreds of places if I needed to. Um, and then uh, this is a mock-up of the console. Uh, this console gives us full control over these, uh, both these radios right now. Um, and then this is our, our, our local base, which would be used, to, like, to, uh, like I said before, to talk to Cal Fire, maybe Cena Action, talk to the crews in the parking lot, that sort of stuff. Uh, right now, uh, the DFSI control, which is a digital fixed, interstate, uh, fixed station interface control, uh, does not fully uh, um, allow us to control these BK radios yet. We're still, I'm still working with the manufacturers on uh, getting that to work. Uh, DFSI, the Digital Fixed Station inter, uh, Interface Control, is actually the only P25 uh, um, uh, protocol uh, for radio over IP. Every other radio over IP that has been done has been, do, been done non-P25. And so the advantage of going non-P25 with this is that um, it allows you to do multicasting and you can get a lot more done uh, for uh, just a little less money. Uh, for a little bit more money, you can go to P25, which is actually our requirement. We're required to be P25. And then you get all the data. When you uh, do uh, broadcasting, it strips all the data off of uh, what's being passed over the radio network. When you do digital fixed station interface control, it, it does not uh, strip the data off. So you get, you, we're gonna get uh, capabilities like knowing which units are uh, calling, using the emergency button on the tops of the radios right here, um, text message capabilities, uh, unit log recording uh, capabilities, um, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So uh, with, if you go the other way, not only are you non-P25, but you, uh, you strip all that data off, and so all the advantages of going uh, uh, radio over IP have just been stripped off. Um, also, radio over IP is going to save us money we can, and, uh, on maintenance and on mountaintop radio costs. It's going to eliminate microwave links, UHF links, and four-wire lines, which are maintenance nightmares for radio types of times. Um, okay, so uh, let's take a look at what we're looking at uh, real quick. Uh, this is, like I said, the mock-up of the mountaintop base station. We have the UIC card, which gives us the uh, radio over IP interface. We have the um, uh, 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 Codan controller on top of that. And down below here, we have a local area network that I built up, uh, up here, um, uh, come up here. Uh, at the very top, we have a local BK base station, and then uh, below it, we have the um, uh, the console control. Uh, down over here, this is the console control. We got the mic and the keyboard control for this. Also, I have three uh, P25s. So that's what I'm going to be doing most of my testing on today. I uh, also have a little radio for talking to the base, just to demonstrate that. And then I have another uh, KNG2 that I'm going to use for demonstrating text messaging. So let's just start with this local control here. You can see right now we got the audio passing through, but I can't go the other way. So test one, two. Sorry about that. That's a little loud. Test one, two. And you can see it, it pops up here. And um, I'm not sure if it records yet uh, for this channel. So we'll skip that for now. 
but I could see there's an analog call coming in and uh, and and it recorded it. Um, let me pull up a uh, call log and see if it actually recorded it. Yeah, it looks like it did record it. Okay, so um, so anyway, uh, this is our call log here. This is one of the capabilities we get with these consoles. The other thing I want to mention about these consoles is uh, this system will be cap uh, have the capability to communicate with any P25 console. Since we're required to be P25, all consoles that the dispatch centers are currently using should be capable with this. It might We might need a little license upgrade or something to get this working, but it, this should work with the consoles we currently have out there. Uh, the consoles we're going to go with going uh, forward for the field offices are Seesaw. Uh, our uh, manufacturers like uh, Realm and Kodan are working with Seesaw uh, to really make sure that the equipment works well together. And so that's why I've kind of made the decision to go with Seesaw for our offices for now. Um, uh, so you can see the uh, local control, we can hear that and we can take log of it, that's great. Um, now let's move over to the Kodan controls and this is where we're the really uh, 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 meat of the project is. So if I click on this DFSI control, it pulls up this other window here, which gives us lots of capability. Uh, I can change from analog to digital from a mountaintop base station. Uh, I can change channels. I can also change channels with this right here. Okay. And that, and that just basically goes from repeater to repeater. Um, as a unit log, so it'll show me when uh, this unit receives. So uh, let me key up a repeater here and you'll watch it. Watch the unit come up. A test one two. A test one two. You see it popped right up here in the unit log. Showed I had an analog call, and so that's all it can basically tell me about that. Uh, if you come up here to the call log, it, I can actually play that back. A test one two. Okay. Um. Voting, not important. Uh, and then it also has a history right here. This will show you different call signs that are calling in. Um, the target ID, who they were actually calling. Um, so you could see earlier I was playing with text messaging, uh, saying yes and no and stop. So it'll show me those text messaging on this uh, history here. Also show who was calling to who, uh, which is kind of neat. Uh, so And we'll go over text messaging more here in just a second. Um, Okay, yeah, so uh, so you've already seen the call logs. So now I'm gonna show you what happens with the emergency button. So if, uh, uh, can you see all three of these radios here? Or just at least two of them? Mm -hmm. See two of them here? So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna make an emergency call in here. Right now I'm using analog, you can see test, 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 test. It's an analog call, so not all the uh, information's on there in the call, but it records things, shows when the calls came in. Uh, if I hit emergency here, it automatically switches my channel and puts me in emergency mode. Now when I transmit, not only will it pop up on this, it'll pop up on the other uh, console up there too. Test one, two. Test one, two. And so you can see it pops up here. I got an emergency call from unit 2663. Pops up here. I got an emergency call from unit 2663. Pops up here. Got an emergency call from 2663. I can replay it. And you'll see I, uh, my, my radio is continuing to send emergency alerts. And, and until I, uh, these two radios acknowledge, uh, it will not, uh, it'll keep beeping at them too. So I can replay the emergency call. Test one, two. Okay. So and I can see, you know, where the emergency was. So now I need to acknowledge. So let me go ahead and do that. Acknowledge. And you can see once I acknowledge, it clears it from the uh, secondary radio. But this is still in emergency mode. It's going to continue to send emergency alerts. And these, as they receive emergency alerts, will go back into emergency mode. Once I clear my emergency by pressing and holding the emergency button, I've cleared my emergency. Now I've cleared it with the dispatch consoles. And I should have cleared it with the handhelds as well. So now the emergency has been cleared. So anyway, that's what, uh, one of the biggest capabilities that, that this is going to buy us in the future. Uh, they are working on the ability to pass GPS data as well. So uh, uh, more fan uh, fancier radios like the KNG2 that have GPS capability will eventually pass um, GPS data uh, with the emergency button. You can also have it send GPS data every time it transmits. Uh, and then we can get a CAD system that shows where each unit is as they're talking on the radio. So that's a little bit farther out uh, for the radio over IP project, but the capability is there. And then, uh, so last thing I'm going to show you, and then I'll let you all go, is the text messaging. This really comes in handy for um, 
uh, for offices that uh, check in and out of service every day with dispatch. So one good example is Central Coast Field Office. Before they leave the office, they check them with portable dispatch. When they get back to the office, they check. They go out of service with uh, portable dispatch. So uh, this system will give us the capability to actually go in and out of service via text message. So you can see I have a text message board here. It'll also pop up on the unit log if I'm texting anything. So right now I'm just going to tell it stop. I'm going to send it a text message that says stop. So I go into my menu here, and I can either do an individual text message or I could just text message only dispatch. So this dispatch unit is $34.99. So first I'll just do an individual call or a text to dispatch. So I'm gonna send one, a predefined that says uh, stop. And I wanna send it to um, uh, unit 3499, that's the dispatch console. So I hit enter. And I can see up here, my dispatch console just beeped at me. It says I received a text message from 3418 and it said stop. It shows me the time when that happened. It also pops up here on log. Uh, it also pops up here on the recording log as well. And I can see the user that sent it was 3418 and they were calling 3499. Now, uh, let's try and do a broadcast and see if my base receives it. So this is a broadcast text message to all users. And so we'll, we'll give it a different message and see if it works. Um, text message, send uh, predefined that says yes. And then let's go ahead and broadcast that to everyone. Done. So you can see also received a message from 3418. It says yes, yes, yes. So it's broadcasting. It will send it several times. Uh, and so you see on the unit log here, it's still broadcasting. Yes, yes, yes. And this is all over the repeater. So this goes through the repeater to the base station, from the base station to the con uh, over the network to the console. So this is the full connection. I'm mocking up just as it, it would be in the field. And so you can see right here when I did a broadcast, all my broadcasts went through. It said yes, yes, yes. Uh, and when you're calling broadcast, for some reason, it pops up as 16777215. I don't know why I'll figure that out later. And then, uh, but I can see the unit that was actually sending in text messages was 3418. And I was saying yes the whole time. Pops up there, pops up right here, day-to-day -day control. So if you don't have your playback uh, call history up, it will, uh, it pops up right here for you to see. It also shows you who sent the text message. And then it pops up on the DFSI control as well. So, okay, uh, that's about all there is to it right now. Hopefully I didn't break anything just now. Uh, that's about all there is to it right now. Um, uh, I'd say I'm about 80% as far as the capability goes. I still have a couple of kinks to work out here and there. But uh, for the most part, this is where we're at with radio over IP. And I plan on having the first pilot uh, in place and working by the end of uh, the summer of 2018. So uh, thank you very much.